This video is just going to be a fire management video for Leroy and Lewis. Since we use two different types of pit, the offset and the direct pit, it works just a little bit differently than pretty much any other ones. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get a fire started. I am making some wicks with some butcher paper here. Just roll them up to a nice little twisted length of the butcher paper. I use about four of them. We're going to start with about 10 logs. We're going to dump them in the grease to kind of use an accelerant uh, on the wick. But before that, I'm going to clean out the firebox and make sure there's no extra ashes in there. We're going to be tossing around a bunch of ash uh, to harvest coals for the chud box anyway, so we don't want a bunch of extra ash in there. As you can see, all four of these wicks nice and soaked in the dripping bucket. It's going to act as a nice accelerant for our fire. So I put one wick down and I put two coal, two logs on either side of it. I've also got these little compressed sawdust fire starters that I'm going to pepper throughout our fire as we build it up. So we've got two logs facing the length of the pit at first. I know we have a rounded bottom so a lot of people will start with their logs horizontal or perpendicular to the length of the pit. I like to start them parallel to the length of the pit at first. That way there's a nice channel and I'll show you guys that in a second. And what I just did was put in a couple more of those little compressed sawdust uh, fire starters and I'm just building up five layers of two logs each. We're going to start with ten logs on this fire. It seems like a lot, but we don't have an insulated firebox. So we need a lot of heat and we also need a lot of coals. As you can see, there's that nice channel down there with the wick, with the fire starter, and then in between each set of two Lincoln logs, except for the very top, I've got a beef fat soaked wick in there. So the idea is plenty of airflow, plenty of accelerant in there to start the fire and then that's really going to let everything kind of come up nicely. So I'm just going to light this end of the butcher paper to make sure that the little fire starter lights and then everything should be good to go after that. If you've built a good fire it should just go up pretty well pretty easily. The idea is to kind of build it up to where all you have to do is click and light one little thing and then it's easy. I should note that I do have all of the doors to the pit open at this point. I don't have any doors closed. I definitely don't have any meat on. I don't want to have any meat on at all when I'm starting the fire because I don't want all that kind of gross smoke, dirty smoke, anything from the paper burning, anything from the fat burning, anything burning from that sawdust, chemical, compressed. I don't want any of that on my meat. So what do you see me coming in and out of the smokehouse right now? What I'm doing is loading from my truck. Uh, tubs of barbacoa and pieces of whole hog and as you can see that was about eight to ten minutes. Fire is fully involved. What I'm going to do now is kind of push it back and knock it down. Something I didn't note earlier is how I'm placing these logs. I'm making sure that thicker logs are closer to the door and the skinnier logs as I'm building them are a little bit further toward the firebox. That way once the fire burns down and the logs break down, the fire will not fall out of the door. It'll fall back toward uh, the pit. So I just pushed it back a little bit and I'm making sure that we're burning good. Now I'm just going to add a few more logs. There's not quite enough coals to put something on the chud box yet. So kind of started with 10. I think I'm going to add probably three or four more logs. Not fully on top, as you can see, I don't really want to spike the temperature up too much right away. This is a nice little feature that Brad builds into all the smokers. It's a little notch system to keep the door open certain amounts, to let in certain amounts of oxygen to kind of control the flow and heat of the fire. So after all that has burned down a little bit, we're going to start kind of kicking logs to the back and getting ready to harvest some coals. I'm bringing some up to the front right now making sure the fire is burning really good, making sure we're producing charcoal for the chud box. So we're burning pretty hot right now. Got a bunch of cheeks and a bunch of barbacoa on there. That's okay. On here we've got two shoulder, two hog shoulders, one hog body, and then barbacoa toward the back. I'm gonna get ready to start to add some coals. Now that that 
Fire has burned down a little bit. What I'm gonna do now is try to bring everything to the front of the firebox and kind of beat down the logs that are still burning. There's just a ton of fresh orange charcoal in here and there's a couple little pieces of charcoal still stuck to those logs. So what I really wanna do is beat that down, try to scrape some of the pieces of charcoal off of those logs and then kick those logs to the back of the firebox making sure that I leave enough logs and charcoal in there to rebuild my fire because I'm basically going to take all of this charcoal out of the firebox and place it underneath the direct pit. Now this is really where our pits and our fire management differs from a lot of other barbecue places. They are really just trying to put a few logs in, probably an insulated firebox, and just maintain the temperature. They're very much concerned with airflow, with Lincoln logging the logs, uh, and we're not too, too concerned with that. Right now I'm scraping out the ashes from the chud box, just like I scraped out the ashes from the indirect pit earlier. And now we're just going to start shoveling coals. Uh, I see a piece here that is not quite uh, broken down to coals yet. One of the main things we don't want to do when firing the direct pit is put anything in there that is on fire that has active flame. That is going to start a fire right away. The flames are going to start licking uh, either the hog or some barbacoa or whatever's on there. It's going to start rendering fat. The fat's going to drip on that flame and then it's going to be engulfed in an entire fire. So we don't want to do that. It's happened enough times already. Uh, but you can see me kind of adding coals to this direct pit. What I'm doing here is kind of adding them in a grid pattern. I'm going to start with the corner closest to me and then the kind of separate into thirds, basically like nine sections here. So going across and then right behind another one, two, three shovelfuls and then I'm going to go in the very back with probably about two shovelfuls. I don't want to scorch the barbacoa, but I do want to get a good amount of heat under here in the very beginning because I want to hit it with as much heat as I can to start with because once it starts rendering, once the fat starts kind of dripping, we kind of have to back off the heat because we don't want to, like I said before, start a huge fire. So I put three shovelfuls kind of closest to the offset pit three shovelfuls behind that and then kind of two behind that and you can see a nice even layer of coals and I'm just gonna drop this lid and then we've got both of our pits nice and fired up and working after a little while oh wait no after I took all the coals out I'm going to kind of rebuild the fire here so again starting with that channel on the bottom I've got coals in the middle and then two logs kind of on either side of it opening up that airflow I want airflow going from the door through that bottom channel through the exchange between the direct sorry through the exchange between the firebox and the chamber and then through the exchange between the chamber and the smokestack so a nice direct line uh, with no interruptions it goes right through the bottom takes oxygen through the fire and then it takes smoke all the way over the meat through the chamber and out the smokestack and now we're just going to build that fire up again about two fours, about ten more logs, and then not quite knock it over, but just push it back a little bit. And then we'll go on the wide notch to let enough air in to really start burning it. And we kind of do the same thing over and over again. Knock it down, take some coals out, build it back up. Selecting kind of a bigger log here to kind of burn longer. As you can see, the temperature on there is rocking really well. It's probably only about 30-45 minutes after I put the first load in. Nice big log to kind of burn a little bit longer without uh, kicking up too much, much more heat in there. After it's cooked down a little bit more, burned down a little bit more, we're going to do the same thing. Knock some coals down, push the big logs to the back, and then harvest some coals to put under our direct pit. That's kind of the cycle that it goes with these two pits. They run, uh, you know, simultaneously off of the same fire. I always thought it was a little bit wasteful when people cook whole hogs to just have a huge burn barrel just burning a ton of fuel, a ton of smoke, a ton of energy, a ton of heat off into the air 
and just throwing all of that heat off into the air and not really using it for cooking. So in this way we get to use the offset smoke, the fuel, in one way and then we also get to you know, empty out our firebox and rebuild a nice clean fire in there by taking all the coals out and using them in another way. And obviously if you've ever seen us cook the cauliflower burn ends or maybe the jerk pork tenderloin or anything else, we are cooking directly on those coals too. So I'm about to put some coals here on the chud box for the second time. The temperature has dipped a little bit, which is what we want. First thing I'm going to do is kind of break up the coals that are already on there and push them back a little bit. There's still plenty of residual heat. I'm just kind of moving them around, exposing the ash covered coals to the air so they're a little bit hotter just by brushing the ash off of them and I'm pushing them back a little bit. If you remember I have the two shoulders up front where I'm putting coals directly under right now and behind that I have the body of the pig which is fattier and thinner so I don't necessarily want to put a bunch of direct coals right underneath the body because it's going to cook faster, it's going to render fat faster, it's going to start a fire faster and if we cook it too hot it can dry out faster too. But we do want to put as much heat as we possibly can under the shoulders because they're very thick. So I'm just pushing back the little bit of coals so the residual heat is going underneath the body. And as you can see I put two shovelfuls under the very back of the pit where the barbacoa is. So the middle is kind of empty. It's got just some residual heat coals. The front has fresh coals with the shoulders. And then the back I put fresh coals underneath too. So the middle, the hog middle, in the center of the pit is kind of cooking a little bit offset, not, not direct, uh, not a bunch of fresh direct heat right under it. And in the firebox of the offset of Rusty, we're going to do the same thing again. I've got my channel on the bottom. We're going to do a couple more horizontal logs and then probably build up about eight to ten more logs. And that's it. We repeat this process. We are not exactly maintaining a super even temp throughout the entirety of this cook, but that's okay. All we're cooking right now is cheeks and barbacoa, and you'll see when I open the pit up in a little bit exactly how everything looked and how everything is smoking. This is nice and fully involved now. I'm going to check this other pit real quick because I just put a bunch of fresh charcoal under it. It's nice and hot but I'm keeping an eye to make sure that I don't see any flame from this little crack in the door uh, right here. That's where I'm really watching and the after I put coals on the direct pit, I'm really keeping an eye on that door for the next about 15 minutes. But that was about uh, 45 minutes after that, and again, push more coals back, kind of expose those kind of half-spent coals, and then push them underneath that middle. And I'm going to reload up with some more fresh charcoal right under the shoulders. As you can see, that little flame kind of poking up, that scared me a little bit, but I'll just tamp it out if it gets too out of control. One more time, build it back up. Make my little channel. And then we'll go horizontal logs on top of that. When I dropped that log, I kicked a bunch of ash and like burning, like tiny coal ash, like onto my leg and it burned me, it hurt. If you build it up uh, too hot, and if your fire gets too hot, a good thing to do is to kind of knock it down like this. You can see the logs all spread out. That fire for me got a little too hot. Knocked it down, spread it out, came back. About 45 minutes later, it looked like that. And I purposefully let it kind of die down a little bit because I know I'm going to be taking a bunch of this stuff off, all these cheeks, all that barbacoa. I'm going to take off some of the cheeks in the hot spots, put them in kofi, and then I'm going to take off that first layer of barbacoa and put that in kofi too. As you can see, I re-seasoned the top of the raw exposed barbacoa. I took the barbacoa off the direct pit. We're getting some really nice color on those pigs. And my shift is almost over. It's time to go get some wood. It really sucks our wood 
uh, stack is all the way kind of across Cosmic, so we got to take this cart all the way over there and then fill it up. But that's one of the best carts we've ever had. Bradley built it for us. It's nice and sturdy. And that's pretty much it.